the unseen color. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Jason, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about colors. Colors to me are super fascinating. We all perceive colors a little bit differently. Uh, if I hold this up, can you tell me what color you see? <coughs> I see kind of a tealish color. Not Northwest green, unlike the Mariners, but it brings up a good point about how does our language affect the way we perceive colors. Uh, today I'll be talking to you guys a little bit about the way we perceive colors, about a famous artist, and then how this all can, uh, how you can use all this information to better yourself through embracing your eyes. Can anyone tell me who this person is? So, Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh is, uh, Vincent Van Gogh uh, was an artist who was uh, born in 1853. He died in 1890, so he didn't live a very long life. This man, he had a very conflicted life. He was a, some accounts, an alcoholic, drank a lot of absence. Some other accounts, he was a super depressed person. In other accounts, he is a person who will, will make a connection with people uh, and really, really digging that connection. Like, I am Allie's best friend. Allie and I are going to do everything together. This is going to be great. But he's also a very irritable person. So, like, I may not like Joseph at all. I just completely ignore him, swear at him. If I see him on the street, I'll throw something at him. And that's the kind of person he is. Kind of this weird uh, confliction of being. Uh, wanting that connection, but also hating everybody as well. Part of this, uh, Vincent Van Gogh had a cerebral, <coughs> cerebral uh, epilepsy. And what that means is uh, he would go in these epileptic shots and it would affect the cerebral portion of his brain, kind of like the visual center of where things are. Can you see how that might be a problem for a painter? Somebody who is using a paintbrush to tell a story uh, his mind kind of wanders in weird areas. Look at the next slide. Can anyone tell me what color stands out to you? Which box, I guess. Bottom right. The bottom right? Over here? Left. Top left. Top left. Top left? Top left? Yeah. I see top left. Okay. So this is not a trick question. Uh, <laughs> As you can see in the next slide, um, we perceive this as green because of our language. So we'll just use the direct. Okay, so as a preface, the scientists went to his tribe in Africa where they have a blended version of their language. Uh, to them, Green and blue can also be just one color. Green, blue, and brown could be a different color. So uh, going from that, he wanted to test out this color he loves people. Very good. But for the hamlet, it's easy to see the green, which is different. So that's the green that stood out to that. So you see, in this particular trial, this green patch looks very much like the other ones, at least to me, and I think to most of the Westerners. Whereas for the Inba, this is a different color. Well, there is, they have a different word for this type of green compared to the other types of green. And that allows them to, to, to more easily distinguish between these two colors when they're next to each other. Whereas for hard, it's very hard. So when Westerners do this exact same trial, they will spend much longer and they will be much more likely to make a mistake than the Inba. Now this doesn't mean that we are. This doesn't mean that we are just like uneducated, you know, <coughs> slobs. We just have different words for different colors. On this next slide, they are asked to find. They showed a circle of green squares, which includes one blue square. They're asked to find this. One color, and you point towards the one that is different from the other eleven colors. For us, we have separate words for green and blue. But as the Himba have the same word for both, it takes them longer to spot the blue. <laughs> Essentially, this whole tribe has trouble seeing that blue color. Now, 
really just back to into their job. It is possible with uh, being someone who's born in Holland, uh, speaking a different language, could view colors differently. And one of my favorite scenes that I thought kind of encapsulated uh, Mr. Van Gogh's the way he sees things was from a show called Doctor Who. start painting until he was 27 years old. So my age right now, six, seven years later for you guys, I bet. And I bring this up because this is something that he started late in his life, this idea of painting. And something he became very no well known for, very famous for. And he didn't think it was very good. The people in town didn't think it was very good. He actually only sold one painting in his entire lifetime. The guy who has paintings selling for millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of paintings, only sold one during his life. Only got that one acknowledgement that he was doing something with life. So what I'd like you guys to do is if you have any weird oddities about yourself, any weird habits or passions, embrace it. If you like dressing up as Spider-Man and going to these conventions, do it. Don't be ashamed to embrace something strange or unique about yourself. I know that for me, I am the type of person who uh, I want to go out and try new, like, adventurous things. I like that adrenaline rush I feel when I'm like on the edge where I might actually die. I like going on these hikes to Mount Sai where you can see hundreds of feet down below when jumping out of planes, or riding a motorcycle and dirt. <coughs> so that's something I want to keep prepared with me, and I hope you guys can find something that you can continue to do. Thank you. Um, Jason, really great uh, job on the, the unseen colors. It really opens up, I think it opens up everyone's perspective on how color and language is related. Um, however, um, I think that you can maybe um, plan out what you're going to talk about. Like, I'm not, because when I was sitting here and listening to your speech, I'm, I wasn't sure whether we're going to fan who's fan. Did I say it correct? Van uh, Gogh's bi biography, or to the colors and cultural and culture uh, or mo motivational speech. That was my opinion, but great topic, very interesting. Um, it was interesting, especially on how Van Gogh's per like perceived color and all. Overall, great job. Thank you. <coughs> 